Hi friends. There was once a grocery chain in Wisconsin and Illinois called Pick and Save. Each store and its parking lot consumed an entire city block. The beige-walled interior sometimes featured a cardboard cutout of their CEO, Chairman Bob Mariano, but almost always featured some kind of giant colorful sculpture of a football or a Thanksgiving turkey made entirely out of soda 12 packs. The stores smelled like the stale crust of ice on the inside of a freezer case. And in my teens, I could not go in one without at least partially melting down. I'm being dramatic for the purpose of a story, but at the age of 19, I was being dramatic for the purpose of being about six months out from being diagnosed with an anxiety disorder and just feeling too much at all moments. In college, the food options available to me were A, a meal plan that worked out to roughly $16 a plate and rotated through the same four vegetarian options over and over again, or B, convincing my boyfriend to drive me to pick and save every other week to buy spaghetti and goldfish crackers and store brand frozen pizzas and honey nut Cheerios. It's called the food pyramid, sweetie. Look it up. So I picked the latter. I remember walking around the store trying to pick out Fuji apples and baby carrots and it would like start thundering. I'm like, with the water spraying on the vegetables, like the produce section was around on Legends of the Hidden Temple. And then you'd get into the actual aisles, a labyrinth of 18 rows that were two of me high and like 27 of me long. I'd circle those aisles trying to remember if peanut butter was with baking supplies or sandwich bread, or if I'd have to swim against the flow of cart traffic back to the generic bulk section to get it in a tub instead of a jar. And then I'd find the peanut butter, but by then I'd have lost my boyfriend. So I'd be trying to pick which of the dozen brands of crunchy I wanted while T9 texting him my whereabouts from a slider phone. It was small stuff, but it set off my faulty brain sirens that are like, alert, you are not lost in a grocery store, you are lost in a grocery store, and it's the end of the world. And of course, it wasn't the end of the world, yet but it wasn't an experience I looked forward to. Even less so when the same brain sirens made me question whether all my favorite foods were making me a moral and aesthetic failure. Anyway, a lot of things happened and I moved to New York. And I don't know what I was expecting really. There's nowhere to put a shelf the length of a city block filled exclusively with paper towels. But when I say my grocery store is small, I mean that there are three aisles. You may think, well, that means they must not have all of the things, you know, that you'd buy in a grocery store. And no, that's not it, because they have all the normal things and somehow all of the special ingredients that I'd read in a recipe in college and be like, I don't know where the fuck I'm supposed to buy tahini, so I guess never mind. They've got everything. There's just only one kind of it. There is one brand of olive oil. There is one brand of rice. I mean, there are like three brands of plant-based yogurt but I am making a video about a thing that's better about New York City, so at least some part of it had to just be insufferable. It just dials down the sensory input by a million, makes it easy and calm. I mean, pre-COVID, I'd pop in a couple of times a week just to grab whatever ingredients I needed for the next day or two, chat with my regular cashier about his latest pet interest, for a while it was vegan food, now it's Bitcoin, I guess. And it has only made me cry once, in my first month of living here when I tried to make a nice little cheese plate for a date night and hadn't really internalized that things are more expensive here and accidentally spent like $40 on one evening's worth of cheese. I guess New York seems like a weird place to move for someone who is so easily overwhelmed. But the same forces that make it so big and bustling make its grocery stores tiny and calm. People like me move here because it feels like a bigger world but it's actually a bunch of extraordinarily tiny worlds stitched together. I could stay in a five block radius of my apartment forever and never want for anything. And I mean, for a while, I did exactly that. But now when I walk around the city, I can feel the subtle shifts of one neighborhood to the next, each with its own grocery store, its own set of restaurants, its own corner bodega, its own cheap flowers, its own scruffy cat, each with its proverbial three aisles with one kind of everything. Everything I need, and it feels like home. Thank you to Alexis Crone who asked for a postcard from a place that made me feel like this is my home city now for, you know, the reasons. I can't just hang out in a grocery store getting B-roll, so I'm sending you this story instead. In the comments, please tell me about a place that made 
your city feel like home. And if you want to help me make you more stories, you can A, click the notification bell below this video, B, join the Radish Collective, my community of Patreon supporters, or C, all of the above. I'll see you soon. Bye.